This video is sponsored by Mel Chemistry, an amazing and awesome monthly subscription with fun, educational, and safe experiments for kids and parents to do at home. It comes with everything you need to get started, plus 90 experiments on over 30 chemistry topics delivered right to your door. Click the link below to get 25% off your first month. And stay tuned to the end of the video for your chance to win a free subscription. I'm a bit of a fan of Game of Thrones, and when reading discussions on the topic, kept finding links to myself. So since the internet seems to think I'm some kind of expert at obsidian casting, I thought I'd revisit the topic again. So last year, I spent a lot of time trying to cast obsidian and made this kind of small knife sword thing that uh, it's not really realistic to use in any way. The end result is kind of pointless, literally, because there is no edge or point to this. It's very blunt and it's held together by glue. So in terms of a functional weapon, it's not one. I doubt you could kill somebody with this. Now with the uh, return of Game of Thrones, the whole question about casting obsidian is becoming more popular again. I kind of wanted to re-explore it and try and make something a little bit more functional. They are introducing new dragon glass, as they call it, or obsidian weapons. And I wanted to experiment and see if I could recreate one that at least looks like theirs. They never really talk about the napping, which is a process of striking obsidian and shattering it to form a razor sharp edge. It's what obsidian is good for. And the other interesting thing in the show is that it's very obviously napped just the way that all the edges appear on it. And it's somewhat implied that it's been cast, like metal, because I show Blacksmith working with it and everything. So while I've proven that it is technically possible to cast it, it isn't any real reason to do it, because obsidian is glass. The sharpest way to get it is to break it, and that's what produces the razor sharp edges. When you cast it, you get all the disadvantages and none of the advantages of nap edges. I guess I'm just gonna show why I don't do that. Let's <laughs> give it a shot. I have styrofoam. I'm gonna carve these two pieces out of. The one in the show, they have two pieces of dragon glass or obsidian held together by some a metal frame wrapped around it. So I'm going to cast this out of bronze and these guys out of obsidian. First, I'm going to carve their approximate shape out of styrofoam here using this little cutter, then do some sand casting using a new method that involves sodium silicate. Hopefully get a better result. So let's give it a shot. Did you ever get seriously injured on this show? Not yet. <laughs> God, they were awesome. Yeah. How do I do inside? <laughs> I think that came together pretty good. Got a nice texture to both the metal and the obsidian that should hopefully transfer into the final version of it. I just gotta cast it and hopefully it all will still fit afterwards. All right, let's start casting. So I'm gonna use a slightly different style of sand casting which should hopefully get a better result. And instead of just water and wet clay, I'm gonna use a compound called sodium silicate. This is also known as water glass. There's a variety of different uses, including cement sealant. Got some fine grained sand, you gotta mix it in there. Do the regular sand casting like I normally do, except I'm gonna add some of these tubes. Once I have everything set, I can expose it to CO2. I'll then vent into it, and that'll react with the sodium silicate, and in a matter of seconds and minutes, it should harden up. Just ready to go right away. So it should be really quick, and because it's hard, it's, there's no chance of it collapsing or anything, like issues I've run into in the past. Should be very straightforward and easy to use but I'm sure I'll mess it up somehow.
looks about right. Yeah. It's pretty. It's like the bronze cooled before it could get to the very edges of it. Just kind of afraid of that. I'm not super familiar with his method and it's only like my second or third time doing it. And I fear I tried to make it too thin to uh, get all the way down before it could cool. I don't see like any real blemishes that I normally get. So I think it's like one of my best casts. Uh, just unfortunately not a complete one. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a little, little difficult to work with. I might try a different metal that's a little bit lighter and try casting it kind of an open face so I can be sure that all of it gets filled in and uh, give that a shot tomorrow. I broke it. After this first bronze cast, I managed to break the first kiln in this process, but was able to quickly fix it by cannibalizing some parts from another kiln. Next, let's get the obsidian mold ready. In my previous video, I did a lot of experimentation to figure out the best possible way to melt and cast the obsidian. Getting the glass stone to melt and become liquid enough to pour tended to work best by first crushing it into a powder, then mixing it with a flexing compound that lowered its melting point to make it a workable fluid at a reasonable temperature. The method I used to cast it was a sand casting mold, which was relatively effective. Later, I revisited obsidian casting for the custom play button I made and used a different technique, a mix of sand and plaster for the mold, where you then melt the shards of obsidian into the mold, which requires a little less flux and heat. So I set up a plaster mold using my foam heads I had carved. Unfortunately, I did a pretty horrible job on the mold as the plaster started to harden on me before I could get everything set, which caused some nasty cracks they're going to be problematic. I also was finding it difficult to get everything to fit inside the kiln with enough plaster around all the parts so that there wasn't any risk of it breaking and leaking out, something I've had happen a few times. I also ended up breaking the foam molds in the process. Fortunately, I anticipated my tendency to fail fairly often, and before I used the foam models, I made some silicon molds from them. Using them now, I can recreate the models using wax and continue by using the lost wax process. So after the first attempt at casting the metal bands, it didn't quite work out so well, so I'm gonna try it again. And just to speed things up, I 3D printed some rough shapes, and now I'm just gonna use a little Dremel to kind of carve them out and add a little bit more character and get them to perfectly fit in the mold. So give it another shot. Later, I realized the CO2 tank had ran out of gas at this point, which caused the reaction to not fully complete all the way through, so the cast ended up a little rough and soft at some parts. But I was going to see if it would work anyways. I used leftover aluminum scrap from the battens I had carved for my camera lens, but it ended up producing a large amount of slag that proved to be pretty difficult to remove and pour around. Hopefully I can work with that.
back to the obsidian. For the next attempt, I decided I'd go back to sand casting, this time using the sodium silicate to bond it, which seemed to be pretty effective so far. Once you refill your CO2 tank, then I used a new mold using the wax models. Then I exposed it to the fresh tank of CO2. Once hardened, I melted out the wax and prepared the obsidian once again. Ah, it's one piece. That's good. Just as the obsidian got to max temp, disaster once again struck, and something burned out on the kiln that couldn't get replaced. The downside of these projects is it really pushes these kilns to their max and can cause a number of potential failures to happen. After making a quick purchase of yet another new kiln, we're back at it, getting the obsidian melted down. But first, a little experiment from our sponsor, but we wait for it to heat up. Today's sponsor, Mel Chemistry, sent us a kit, and we can make our own monsters using a little bit of chemistry. So let's try it out and see what happens. Because the night is dark and full of terror. Pour some glass. I mean obsidian. I mean dragon glass. <laughs> One of those. All of those. Okay. No pressure. Oh, gloves on fire. We're not doing this inside. <laughs> no idea if I made it to the bottom. It got pretty thick. It's a little hard to grab when it's on fire. Make a wish. Like a glove. There's potential. It's a little thing that was stuck to the crucible. Dragon's glass. So I let the kiln cool overnight, and unfortunately, the cooldown cycle got interrupted, likely because of a large setup, not quite what it was designed for. So it probably cooled down a little too quickly, but it's still fairly warm this morning, so hopefully, you have at least some level of success. We got weird ash here from the leftover wax. I assume the burned off ribbony glass. Interesting formation as it poured out. Let's see if we can just grab the whole thing, see how solid it is. Yeah, super solid. Ooh. Break it open and see what we got. That's a little disappointing. There we go. Ooh, got some success with that one. Yep. After a lot of work, I have the final results and not super great. Most of it did not even get into the mold, it seems. Uh, we got a little bit of stuff in the tip. This might be more of the leftover wax. I'm not entirely sure. It's kind of crystallized and hardened. This one section of it did actually turn out pretty good filled most of it, but it didn't retain much of the actual pattern that I put into it. The napped edges and very sharp and pointy, a little disappointing. I think it's kind of similar to the result I got with my sword. You get some detail, but overall the edges are pretty rounded. 
And uh, it's kind of what happens when you use a very viscous liquid like obsidian. So I'm gonna consult with some maesters, see if I can figure out a little something, a little bit more like what they do in the show. We might need an actual dragon, or at least what our budget will allow. <laughs> So after all that, this is the end result. My battle axe made out of dragon glass, reinforced with metal and ready to go to war. Got both the bronze and the aluminum on here. Actually attaching the metal ended up being pretty difficult even though you use softer metals. The real challenge of making a weapon like this is a combination of brittle glass and hard steel which uh, even though I used softer metals, was still a pain to get these to fit perfectly. So actually making a weapon like this by casting the obsidian is pretty much impossible. I had to use a little bit more of a movie magic that resembles kind of what they actually use in the show, kind of a black ooze that they pour into molds. It's not actually obsidian, spoiler alert. And even then, this is still difficult to assemble. For the actual casting that I did, I also made an axe out of that. It's a bit more primitive, doesn't have any sharp edges, but at least it's a very blunt object and will likely break which will reveal razor sharp edges, potentially lethal. Trying to cast obsidian is not really a great idea. You're likely to get more rounded edges, such as I got with my first sword. Really none of the advantages of actually using obsidian. In terms of actual accuracy, proper way to really use obsidian is to break off small flakes and embed it into pieces of wood or similar items. It creates kind of a nice cutting edge that uh, if any piece breaks, the whole thing isn't just gonna shatter. It's just that one piece and you can replace it and you don't just lose the entire item all at once. So this is what you'd really want to use. <laughs> See, easily to replace. So these weapons don't really have too much basis in reality or much real function. It is a fantasy series. It takes a little liberties, so I probably forgive them. But to get more into a realistic aspect of turning rocks into an actual weapon, an ax, maybe taking some days off and doing some traveling in the next few weeks, and one of the stops I'm gonna make is to a archeological farm in England where I'm gonna learn from an expert how to primitively smelt copper into an actual metal from raw rocks and cast a primitive ax. But until then, I feel like not the greatest weapon, but I feel reasonably safe if any White Walkers will come. <laughs> Thank you to Don Hestrom and Antonio Rodriguez for the sweet Ice Walker head they quickly threw together for us. Thanks again to Milk Chemistry for sponsoring this video. Here's your chance to win a free six month subscription to the Milk Chemistry Kits. Here are the winners for our last drawing we did. Send us your email and we'll hook you up with your free six month subscription. To enter to win, just answer this question in the comments. Carbon is the fourth most abundant element in the universe. Tell us what is the atomic number given to carbon? In a couple weeks, we'll do a random drawing to select three lucky winners. If you are too eager to wait to see if you won, click on the link below to get 25% off your first month of subscription to Mel Chemistry. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.